One of the worst things that can happen to you while on a ride is a flat tire, especially when you're caught unprepared. Here's how you can make sure that doesn't ever happen to you. Flat tires are one of the most common problems that you'll have with any bike. So I always recommend using at least one preventative method to reduce the amount of flats that you'll get. And while there are usually plenty of local bike repair shops that can switch out a tube quickly, I suggest learning how to do these types of repairs yourself. It may seem intimidating at first, but rest assured it's really not as hard as it looks, and in the long run it will save you a lot of time and money to learn how to do basic bike maintenance such as this at home. Most e-bike tires come with at least some sort of flat prevention built right in, typically in the form of a layer in the tire's rubber and threading. For example, most rad power bikes use Kenda tires, which come with their K-Shield liner built into the tire. This adds puncture resistance, but they are certainly not puncture proof. Are e-bike tires prone to more flats than standard pedal bikes? In my experience, yes they are. This is because e-bikes usually use fat tires, which are much wider, so that there's a greater area of contact with the road, and therefore a greater chance of encountering sharp objects while rolling across it. Your average e-bike also weighs almost double that of a standard bike so a greater force pushing down on the sharp object that you may be running over. Fat tires run at a much lower PSI, around 20 to 30, than your typical mountain bike tire or slimmer commuter tire, which is around 50 to 60. So when riding a fat tire bike, you may be running with much less air in your tube, and if that PSI gets too low, you may get a pinch flat. If you live in an area like I do, you'll run into the dreaded goat head. Goat heads, or thorns in general, cause the majority of the flat tires that I get since they are naturally occurring and really hard to avoid, especially if you go off-roading. Since most car and motorcycle tires are made from much thicker and durable rubber than bicycle tires, other types of man-made debris on the road are flung over to the bike lane, where most bike riding is done. You may not encounter a flat by way of nail or screw as often as a thorn, but when you do, it's usually much more devastating. Holes from thorns usually cause a slow, barely noticeable leak in the tube, which may let you make your way back home before you ride in on the rim. However, when you get a nail or a screw in your tire, the hole it makes is much larger and usually puts you out of commission much faster. So I definitely recommend taking some sort of flat preventing precautions beyond what comes standard with your tire. The most basic and in many ways most effective flat prevention product you can use is a tube sealant such as Slime, Flat Out, or a hundred others that are on the market. These products can be categorized into two different types products that are a pre-treatment that you add to your tube before you get a puncture, and products that you add after you get a puncture. So some are more of a preventive precaution, and some are designed to be more of a repair. At the core though, they are all basically a thick, sticky substance that gums up any holes that happen to the inner tube. But the main difference is that the post-puncture sealants like Fix-A-Flat come in a pressurized can that will actually inflate your tire as you are injecting it as opposed to slime or flat out that are pre-treatments that are squeezed into the inner tube and will require a pump or compressor to inflate afterwards. Slime type products will also typically have tiny particles in them that help with sealing up the hole faster. With both types of sealants, when or if the tube encounters a puncture, this internal coating bubbles out quickly drying and seals the hole preventing more air from escaping. They are great for small holes, however they are less effective with larger ones. The makers of these sealant products will have a listing for the largest hole size it will work on, so don't be under the false impression that if you slime your tires, you'll be free from getting flats altogether. The cost depends on the size of the bottle that you buy and the brand. A 16 ounce container of slime typically goes for around $10. Flat out comes in larger bottles, so a 32 ounce bottle is sold for around 20. If you can find them, some inner tubes come with slime already pre-installed, but I haven't seen this on fat tire inner tubes, mostly on the slimmer ones. Sealants are definitely easy to install and can take 5 to 10 minutes if you know what you're doing. All you really need is the slime, a valve core remover that usually comes with it, and an air pump, and you're good to go. For the pressurized sealants like Fix-A-Flat, you don't even need the air pump, it inflates itself, but in my experience they are less effective in sealing holes. Instead of sealing a puncture after it happens, another method to prevent flats is to stop your tubes from getting holes in the first place with tire liners. Just as with sealing products, there are many tire liners on the market, so that there's a lot to choose from. Two of the best known ones are from Tannis Armor and Mr. Tuffy. While they are both tire liners, they prevent flats in two entirely different ways. Products like Tannis liners rely on creating a buffer zone, or shield, with thick proprietary foam padding between the inner tube and the inside of the tire. So it doesn't stop a puncture, but will instead absorb it into the foam instead of the inner tube. Kind of like wrapping something in bubble wrap. 
Because of this extra foam padding, there is also an added layer of protection against pinched flats. So if your tire pressure gets too low, or if you run into very rough terrain and you happen to get a rim strike. Alternatively, there are Mr. Tuffy or similar style liners. Instead of adding thick padding, they provide a thin, durable, puncture-resistant layer between the tube and the tire to stop any sharp objects from getting to the tube, like a bulletproof vest for your inner tube. But just like sealants, there are limitations as to the amount of protection tire liners are able to provide. If you come across a nail or screw long enough, it will definitely make its way past the 15 millimeters of Tannis armor foam. And if the object is sharp enough and has enough force exerted onto it, it may be able to push through even the strongest Mr. Tuffy liner. Mr. Tuffy is gonna go flat. So no product by itself is bulletproof. Tire liners are going to be a more expensive option than sealants. Tannis armor foam liners go for around $60 and up per wheel, or they can be bundled with a smaller replacement inner tube for around $75 and up per wheel. Well, Mr. Tuffy liners can cost anywhere from $30 to $60 and up, and are usually sold in pairs. Installing tire liners can take some time and are moderately more difficult to put in than just new tubes by themselves. Sealants and liners are good by themselves, however, I recommend using them together for the most possible protection. That way, you have double the peace of mind. Another method to prevent flats that is gaining more popularity is to remove the main failure point of the wheel entirely, the inner tube. If your rim and tire are tubeless ready, you can instead use a product like Stan's No Tubes, which is similar to slime or flat out sealants. However, instead of coating your inner tube with a gooey sealant, this product is applied to the tire itself and seals any and all air leaks. So you can inflate your tire without needing to use a tube at all. Any new punctures to the tire after you installed it will seal up just like tube slime. As I mentioned, it is important that your tire and your wheel are designed to be able to take this tubeless conversion, and it takes a bit more work to install than just injecting slime in an inner tube. Many riders that have made the switch will swear by tubeless, and will usually advocate doing it if you ever ask them. A bottle of Stan's No Tubes costs anywhere from $10 to $20, depending on the size you'll get. This cost, of course, doesn't take into account if you are purchasing new tubeless ready tires or valve stems to be able to do this conversion. Those are the most conventional ways of preventing flat tires on your e-bike. However, there are a few low-cost, unconventional DIY hacks that you may come across that might work for you with varying degrees of success. One very popular hack is to take an old inner tube and make it into a tie liner. This creates a lining that may not be as preventative as a product like Mr. Tuffy that is specifically designed to prevent punctures, but it does add another layer of protection to your tubes at essentially no extra cost, since you were probably just going to throw away that old inner tube anyway. I've used this method before with good results. Along with slime, it greatly reduced the number of flat tires that I received from thorns. The only downsides is that it's a DIY, so you'll have to cut to size and ensure everything is lined up correctly by yourself. And if you previously installed a sealant like slime in your inner tube, you're going to have a huge mess on your hands when you decide to cut it open and use that tube as a liner. Believe me, I've done it and it's very messy. Another DIY trick that I've personally tried was the pool noodle hack. It's essentially a very low cost foam tie liner using either pool noodles or the foam pipe insulation that you can find at hardware stores. Sort of a poor man's tennis armor. It is extremely inexpensive since the cost of these foam tubes can be as little as a dollar plus tax at a dollar store. The padding that they provide is going to be less effective than the higher density foam that is found in products like tennis liners that are specifically designed for tires. You also run the risk that the pressure from the inner tube or from riding will compress the foam over time which will flatten them down to a thin layer of flimsy plastic, offering little to no protection after that happens. I also wanted to add in what I consider to be must-have accessories that can help with unexpected flats. Patch kits are extremely cheap and can be a lifesaver if you need to patch a hole while you're far from home. Just make sure you buy a quality kit, and if it comes with a tube of glue, check it every so often to ensure it hasn't leaked or dried up. Something that goes along with the patch kit, since many have them included, is get in a couple tire levers, if you don't have any already. I've done it, and you've probably done it, but it should go without saying that jamming a hard, metal, and potentially sharp flathead screwdriver into your inner tube to pry up the tire isn't the best idea. Tire levers are pretty cheap, so there's no real excuse for not having them. If you have the storage space on your bike or bag, I recommend bringing along a portable pump, or since they're getting small enough, a battery-powered air compressor instead. It also goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, buy spare inner tubes. Especially if you have a tire size that is not standard, such as the 22 by 3 inch tires of the Radwagon 4. With supply chain disruptions and component shortages, there have been instances when specific inner tubes have been impossible to find. So it's best to have at least a couple on hand, or you may be stuck for months waiting for replacements. 
Finally, maybe not as required as everything else, but I've found that they're nice to have, a tire pressure monitor. It's probably overkill for most, but if you're having issues with flats, it's nice to know when your inner tubes may have sprung a leak. This little unit will monitor the front and rear tire PSI and will alert you to any pressure or temperature issues that you may be unaware of and only realize until you've gotten miles away from home. The unit I have was originally intended for a motorcycle, but it works great on my e-bike. I believe it was around $40 to $50. These are the most common ways that I know of to prevent flat tires on your e-bike. Let me know what you do to prevent flats or if you tried any other hacks that may have worked really well. I wanted to say thank you to all who are subscribed. I just reached 500 subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you, and I appreciate each and every one of you. If you like my videos and haven't yet, please click the subscribe button or just hit thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And if you're looking to purchase a Rad Power bike, you can use my referral link in the description of this video to get $50 off a Rad e-bike order. I'd really appreciate it. As always, thank you for watching and have fun out there.